Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask of you that this message will travel far in the hearts of your children, remolding and reminding them of the imminent rapture and how much they ought to be extraordinarily careful in this wicked and adulterous generation. Thank you, Father, because I know the work of grace will be carried on again and there will be surgical operation in every heart who is privileged to hear this message. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Precautionary scriptural references, PSR, is the message you are hearing. It's a Bible study, but I want it to be a brief Bible study for easy assimilation and consumption. I don't want you to learn and forget easily. In other words, I don't want you to be a forgetful learner as far as this year is concerned. The Called Out Ministry is a spiritual church. It is a church that God formed, instituted. The church that God made to prepare people for the imminent rapture and to cause spiritual reawakening and revival in the hearts of the people of God. To help us know what lies ahead of us as people of God, even as we sojourn towards heaven. Precautionary scriptural references. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, it said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, not pornography, not the news or what is trending on social media. It said, Let the word of God dwell in you richly, not haphazardly, not intermittently not occasionally, richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonition one another, in psalms and songs and spiritual songs, and singing with grace from your heart unto the Lord. Until the word of God dwells in you, you can come to the dimension of God's worship that I'm talking about today, precautionary scriptural references. For you to be deep in the law, you must know the word of God. You must accept the word of God and treasure the word of God. You must live by the word of God you know and allow it to tailor your part every day of your life. In all the relationships you are having, in all your dealings with any human being on the face of the earth, you consider the word of God first. You give the word of God a preference. You give the word of God authority over your relationships. All you do and everywhere you go, the word of the Lord is the one dictating the pace and leading the path. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 and 19. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 and 19. As I study to show thyself a proof unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Which means you need to know the word of God and the personal application of the word of God. Lest you become deceived by the spiritual charlatans we have in our time. Quite a number of people are preaching the word of themselves, but they coded it as being the word of God. They say they are preachers and they are preaching everything that equals to nothing. The major or minor. And they do not know sound doctrine. What will plant your feet on the, on the narrow road and keep you feet for the kingdom that is coming. The Bible says you take the pain by yourself to study, to show yourself approved. You must know it. 
until you know it, you are not going to be approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed so that people cannot just begin to toss you here and there, directing you here and there because you do not know your left from your right as far as the journey of faith is concerned. You will not be deceived or cajoled or led astray because you have studied the word, you've accepted the word, and the word is leading you. Workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And in verse 19, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the law standeth sure. The law, and having this zeal, the law knoweth them that are is. Wherefore, let every man that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The scriptural passages I want to read to you and make few explanations on each of them in this message are just, you know, a few out of inexhaustible precautionary scriptural references loaded in the Bible to guide and to tailor your part in this adulterous and perverted generation. Many Christians that will not make heaven, they are already stocked up in their various churches, assemblies, and denominations today. But they do not understand that it is one thing to be a member of a local church. It is another thing entirely to be a member of the body of Christ. Unless your name is written in the book of life, regardless of the church you attend, and whoever is your pastor all over the world, you are not yet a child of God. And the document of your spiritual journey, your spiritual trip to heaven is missing in heaven. Unless you are totally and comprehensively born again, you are regenerated and saved in your heart, inside out, your personality being remolded, and God is now the father, the leader, your master, your backer in everything you do before you talk, you consult him and ask him, can I say this? Can I do this? Can I go that way? Can I befriend him? Is it right for me to embark on this unless you have come to that level in your relationship with God? You don't know him yet. And that's why you will not move forward. So the Lord is asking me to give you precautionary scriptural references, things that can checkmate your life and moderate your Christian life, lest you run this race in vain. Nevertheless, with all I've been saying, with every bit of explanations I've given, it said much more than that, the foundation of the law standeth sure. Having this zeal, the Lord knows them that are ill. In other words, God knows those who are actually serving him just as much as those who profess to know the Lord uh, tells whoever cares to listen to them that they are Christians. Just as you say, you are a child of God. Even likewise, God knows if truly you are his child or not. Having this zeal, the Lord knows them that are ill. And if we profess to know the Lord, the Bible says one of the marks is that you will depart from iniquity. You will not relish in iniquity. You will not cherish iniquity. You will not love iniquity. You will not practice iniquity. You will not be stocked up in iniquity. You will not propagate iniquity. You will not justify iniquity. You depart from it. You will not touch it. You will not love it. You will not practice it. And people will know that indeed yours is different. Having this zeal. The Lord knoweth them that are is, and let every man that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let me tell you that there is no useless verse in the entire Bible. Every verse in the Bible is unique and is meant to, to occupy a special place in your heart. Every verse in the Bible is meant to correct you and lead you in the worship of the Lord. Every verse in the scripture is important because the Spirit of God wrote them for our spiritual admonition, our physical admonition, our emotional, our financial admonition, our marita, and of course, interpersonal edification. The Spirit of the Lord wrote those verses of the Scripture to do all this in our lives. No man in any dispensation has been able to know God, to follow God, or walk with God acceptably without the aid of scriptural you know, verses, without scriptural 
8, unless the Bible is consulted, unless the Bible is known and obeyed, you cannot serve the Lord adequately. You can serve Him acceptably. You can't. It is the spirit of the living God via the written word of God that will lead you into the proper and perfect worship of God. Otherwise, you are just an idol worshiper unknowingly. Unknowingly. We live by the word of God. We fellowship with God through his word. We know God and we serve him by his word we know what is sinful and abominable in the sight of god via the bible until we consult the scriptures we will not know god's do's and don'ts you see god's mind god's anger god's judgment god's love and god's other side and of course the eternal decision of god over the wicked and those who will die in their sins uh, have been completely scripted in the scriptures they are written down boldly legibly in black and white called the bible so the bible is the connections of god's word meant to train to trim and as well to consolidate our faith in god there is no subject in life with regard to human relationships no subject in life with regard to humanity that are not contained in the word of god anything you are looking for in life Anything you want to know about yourself, just consult the scriptures, you will see them there. However, my main concern today in this Bible study, I hope you are listening and you are hearing me. I will stay together now. My main concern today is based on some out of inexhaustible precautionary verses meant to monitor meant to checkmate, meant to balance up and to perfect our work with God as we anticipate the imminent rapture. There is hardly any message I will preach and I will forget to remind you about the coming of the Lord. The Lord is coming. Jesus can appear anytime, any moment. Get ready for his coming. Don't let him come and meet you unaware, unprepared. You will not love the resultant effect. What will later happen to you after we have left this world, you will never love it. And yet you can't run away from it. Antichrist will torture you and discipline you beyond description. If you regularly meditate and match your life with those verses I'll be bringing to you in this message, eventually the grace of God will qualify you for heaven. Precautionary scriptural references. PSR. Number one, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. The background leading to this verse is that the children of Israel left Egypt and they were on their way to Canaan. Along the line in the wilderness, they began committing series of sins against the Lord, and the Lord was speaking it against them. It got to a time God told Moses, This will be the tenth time. These people will be tempting me. Leave me alone and let me destroy them. But Moses pleaded and prayed on their behalf. And the Lord hearkened unto Moses, forgave the sins of the children of Israel. But at this point, they ate in sacrifice unto idols, and thousands of people died in their midst. Eventually, the Bible, through Paul the Apostle, in the spirit of the living God, pencil it down and he said, Wherefore, let him that thinketh is standard take heed, lest he fall. For you not to fall, you must take heed. What does it mean to take heed? Be careful. You can't do everything that others are doing. You can't dress the way others are dressing. You can't go the way they go. You can't do the kind of job they are doing. You must separate yourself. You must know this and get it settled in your heart that others may, you cannot. There is a particular requirement that is required of you as a child of God to remain faithful and holy in the sight of God. You must take your spiritual antibiotics religiously and rigidly or else you will fall. It is very easy to fall away from the truth 
and still thinking that you are still standing on the truth. That's where the problem lies. You have fallen, yet you didn't know. You are no longer where you think you are, and yet you can't understand this. And the devil will be deceiving you with all his antics and leading you astray. Little by little, you are getting farther and farther away from the truth, from the doctrine of Christ, which is able to make you wiser than the enemies and get you prepared for the coming of the Lord. He said, if you think you are standing, if you think you have some remnant of grace left over, grace in your life grace is still there over your life you still command some respect spiritually you carry grace you carry mercy if you think that you are heavily anointed if you think that god is using you if you think that you know god and he knows you if you think that you are walking on the way to heaven the bible says with all this thought of your heart say be careful be watchful. You know, when you write an examination, sometimes when you when you finish the exam ahead of other students, the invigilator may, might say, you can briefly go through your answer seat again. You might see certain things to correct. You might see certain punctuation you did not make, certain commas. You didn't make exclamations or question mark. That's exactly what the Bible is saying here. You are writing spiritual examinations. It says sit down. Ponder on what you have written down. Is your life okay before the Lord? Is it true that your life is holy? Your life is acceptable? Your life is pure? That God approves your life? Is it true? Is it true that indeed you are more than a conqueror as far as faith is concerned? That if God is to beam the spiritual searchlight into your life, you will not find anything. That by the grace of God, you are living a life that is acceptable in the sight of God, useful to sinners and profitable to believers. Is that kind of a spiritual life the Lord, the Lord has helped you to command and to live as a child of God, even at that? He said, be careful. Be careful. Don't be pompous. Don't be arrogant. Don't be egoistic. The Christian race is delicate. Unless you are careful, you will fall away. Peter fell with all he knew in the Lord, with all he saw the Lord Jesus Christ that, you know, doing, he fell. And Jesus saw his falling ahead of time. He warned him. Peter did not take heed. He said, even when, if, if others will have to leave you, if, I, if it entails that I should die for you, I will die for you. And Jesus says, that's so said exactly what you hear me say. I can never betray you. Peter betrayed the Lord thrice. And quickly he remembered, but thanks be unto the Lord. He rectified his ways and grace requalified him for the journey. And he still did exploit for the Lord. As I speak with you, to the best of my knowledge in the scripture, Peter made heaven. He that thinketh is standard, take heed lest he fall. Don't fall away. If you fall away like Demas, you will miss heaven. If you fall away like Korah, Dutton, and Abiram, you will miss heaven. If you fall away like Alexander the coppersmith, he was an elder in the Ephesus church, and yet he didn't make it, you can as well lose the kingdom. Don't lose the kingdom. Be careful. Don't go the way others are going. Don't do what they are doing. Don't eat what they are eating. Separate yourself unto the Lord. Number two, still in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, be not deceived. Evil communication, corrupt good manners. If you are well behaved, if you are an obedient church member, if you are an obedient church worker, remain obedient. Remain trustworthy, remain dependable, remain resolute and determined to follow instruction and contribute immensely towards the development of your local church. Don't be a crooked tree that scattered the fire. Don't allow anybody to enter into your heart and make you misbehave. 
keep on honoring the Lord, respecting your pastor and the leaders, on, you know, that you are serving the Lord under them. Be an encourager. Don't be a discouragement. Yes. Don't be a discourager. Don't discourage anybody from serving the law. Don't turn anybody away from the law. Let it be on record that you are an encourager to people. Let it be on record that you know what you are doing in the house of God and in the service of the law. Don't keep complaining with dissemblers. Don't go with backbiters. Don't go with the gossips. Don't go with those who find fault. Don't go with hypocrites. Don't pitch your tent towards Sodom. Otherwise, you will be there for destruction. Evil communication, corrupt good manners. Who are your friends now? What kind of association have you formed? The people you are moving with now in your Christian life, are they adding to your Christian life or they are subtracting from your spiritual life? Do they help you to pray more? Are they, are they, are they, are, do they share the scripture with you? Are they comparing scriptures with scriptures? And you have been daily edified. Or they are turning you back to things you vomited longest time ago. Do they return you back to Egypt? Are they teaching you how to watch pornography? And they tell you, you cannot just completely break away from the world like that. You must know what is going on in the world. I ask you, what is exactly the world is doing that you need to pay attention to? What lessons is the world teaching you? The world has nothing to teach you other than pollution, corruption, contamination, and deviation from the truth. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Anybody you are complaining with, anybody you move with, and is indirectly affecting your spiritual life negatively, cut off from that fellow. Otherwise, you will fall. Number three, precautionary scriptural references. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. The Bible says, mark them, so I, beseech, I beseech you, mark them which causes division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which thou hast learned and avoid them. You see, when we teach you the word of God and somebody is coming now to teach you otherwise, you know by the grace of God, this is the right interpretation of the scripture and we lay it bare unto you. You understand the word, the grace of God and the spirit of God confirming that this is the right interpretation of the word of God. You are happy, you are growing, you are jumping and diversifying in the spirit, but suddenly you go ahead to join yourself with the people who are causing division. Division and offenses, contrary to the doctrine we have taught you, the Bible says, avoid them. Avoid them. Run away from them as fast as your feet can carry you. There are people who say today that once you are born again, you are forever born again. The Bible says they are wrong. The Holy Spirit said they are wrong. You can be born again and lose your born againism experience. When you become careless and you go back into your sins, you are no longer fit for the kingdom. For the kingdom, number four, Luke chapter 12, verse 15, Jesus said, Beware, take heed, take heed, take heed, because the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of what he possesses. Your life is not in the quantum of what you have. It's not in the degree that you are, you are basking together. It's good to go to school and have good certificate. I do not frown at it. I have mine by the grace of God. You need to have certificate, but then do not just uh, uh, allow that one enter into your brain and you forget that this world is not your home. Your life, the happiness of your life, the satisfaction of your life is not in the degree of the possessions you have in this world. It's in the degree of the fear of God and the holiness of God in your life. What is holiness? Living for God. You live for God. When you talk, it's like God talking. When you live, it's like they are seeing Jesus physically manifesting in your life and through your life. Bear this in mind. The life of a man does not consist in the abundance of what he has. 
You may have houses, you may have complaints, you have money, you may be a billionaire, a trillionaire, you know, whatever it is. God has helped you. Please understand that the, the, the purpose of your existence is not determined by how much you have in your bank account. It's not determined by the brain that God has given to you. It's not determined by the certificate you are able to have. Maybe you are a PhD holder, or you even have like five, six, seven PhD holders in different disciplines. Those things are nothing. Submit them to the law, lest you miss the kingdom of God. Number five, Matthew chapter six, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't allow the kingdom of God to be taken away from you by the vanities, the fantasies of this world. Don't allow what is going on in the world to derail you from serving the Lord. Remain holy, remain righteous, remain upright, remain pure, remain sanctified, set apart and sacred for the master. The Lord wants you in this form. The Lord wants you in this form. I said the Lord wants you in this form. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. There are so many people now, they are running after education. I want to become like this. They run after business. They run after contract. They run after this and after that. I must travel overseas. I must do this. I must do They are all good. But they are not the best. The Bible says seek first. First thing first. Put the first thing in the first position. Don't miss the arrangement. Don't misarrange the arrangement. Otherwise, you will regret it later. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Houses, money, cars, and fame, and the likes. Position, authority, anything you desire to have in this world, in the fear of God, they are all additionals. They will be addition, they will be added unto, unto you when you allow yourself to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All the additionals will come. All the additions will come. They will be added to you. God knows that you need them. And he brings them to you as at when do you. Then number six, Matthew chapter seven, verse 15. Jesus said, the way of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raveling wolves. The way of them, there are many now. They tell you, you can say whatever you want to say, dress anyhow, talk anyhow, eat anything. In fact, some of them will tell you, show me in the scriptures where the Bible says you should not drink alcoholic beverages. They say things like that. But what's the, what's the result of alcoholic beverages consumption? What is the result? Is it not dissension, fighting a mother, despicable things, offensive attitudes before the Lord? Of course. They are. So you mustn't take them. The Bible says, give strong drink to him that is ready to perish. Yes, that's what the scripture says. So, the way of first prophet, those who are teaching you how to make it in life, but they don't teach you how to get to the kingdom of God, they are false prophets. Those who teach you how to be comfortable in life, they teach you how to make money. They teach you how to transact business. They teach you how to do what you are doing with a touch of expertise. They teach you virtually everything that the world can offer. And what they are teaching, they are very much correct. But they forget to teach you about the kingdom of God. The Bible says they are false prophets. They are false prophets. Not until you teach heresy before you become a false prophet. When you exhort the things of this world above and beyond the things of God, in the lives and hearts of the people, you are a false prophet as far as heaven is concerned. Our primary uh, reason for, for being in existing, the reason we are in existence is to serve the Lord. We didn't die because God wants us to serve him more. We will have been dead yesterday, spared our lives because he wants us to serve him more. So preach the truth. Run away from false prophets. 
Anyone that is teaching you and telling you things you cannot find in the scriptures, run away from them. And don't just take whatever you are taught the way you are taught. Be like the Berean believers in Acts of the Apostles. They went back home cross-checking in the scriptures to see whether those things the apostles taught them were so. Somebody said jokingly, if you want to conceal the truth from average Nigerians, just put it in a book. Said they will be walking past the book without picking up to read. To read. Read your Bible on your own and test every spirit or else will be deceived. So many deceivers today on the pulpit. And they talk where? They preach where? They do think what they do where? But God is not in them. How do you know that God is in them? When they warn you of your sins and they are not joking about it. When they warn you that the judgment is coming. They preach with all seriousness and you can even see the reflection of their messages in their own lives. Then those are the true prophets or those who are not warning you. They pamper you. They teach you and they allow you to live the way you are. They don't put a demarcation. The difference between the holy and prevail. Those are the false prophets you are told to run away from. Matthew chapter 24 Verse 42, precautionary scriptural references. I'm talking purely to believers, those who are genuinely born again, and they don't want to spend their eternity in hell fire. Those who are praying and fasting, they are careful, they are meditating. Help, have mercy upon my soul. Help me, O oh Lord. I don't want to die lost. I don't want to die in carelessness. I'm talking to you if you are the type. I'm not talking to everybody. There are believers who are careless. But if you know you are a careful believer, listen to this message, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and even tell your friends to come to, you, to this YouTube channel. You will be fed spiritually, both in the linga fracker and in the vernacular, by the very special grace of God. God gives me the grace to understand the two perfectly, perfectly. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Wherefore, let him, wherefore, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. After Jesus have told his disciples, there are happenings on the last day. He said, watch therefore, because you do not know what hour your Lord doth come. What does it mean? You don't know what you will be doing and the trumpet will sound. You do not know where you will be going. You don't know the function you will be attending. You don't know what you will be saying. You don't know where you will be and the trumpet will sound. So whether you are eating, you are talking, you are walking, you are bathing, you are eating, you are doing anything, be watchful. Be watchful because you can't tell when the Lord will come. And in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 13, it says, Take fast hold on instruction. Keep her. Don't allow her to go. For she is thy life. How obedient to the word of God are you? Are you obedient to the scriptures? Are you teachable? Are you corrigible? Are you corrigible? He said, hold on to instruction. Don't allow instruction to forsake you. That is your life. The more you hear the word, the better your life becomes when you obey what you are hearing. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 4. To nine. Philippians chapter 4, from verse 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things have good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? All these are required of you as a child of God, if truly you want to get there on the final day. In Second Peter chapter 1, 
Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5. I'm still talking on precautionary scriptural references. Allow these references to tailor your life this year, everywhere you go, and you will be living, prepare, will be living a prepared life for the rapture. You will be living a qualified life for the imminent sounding of the trumpet. And beside this, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from, from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. You shall never fall. But if you don't do them, what will happen? You will fall lamentably. You will fall beyond recognition. This is the word of God for you, child of God. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, it tells us we shouldn't love in words and in mouth alone. But let us love indeed. Let us love one another. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, knoweth God. He that loveth not, know not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7 and 8. First John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. He that loveth not, Knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is love. Love is not love is not God, but God is love. Love one another. Don't castigate your brethren. Don't criticize your brethren. Stop criticizing the men of God. Stop criticizing fellow believers. Rather pray for them and ask God to show them grace. If you notice, if you spot any awkwardness in their spiritual journey, go to God in prayer. That's how to show love to them. Don't broadcast their error. Go to God and ask God to help them to overcome their spiritual awkwardness and uh, their spiritual you know, uh, backwardness. Because of my time. Revelation chapter 2 and in verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. Have you been taught that the trumpet will sound any moment from now? Hold that fast till he comes. If I've been taught the richness and the riches of forgiveness hold it fast till he come be firmly rooted in them if i've been taught never to be vindictive hold that fast till he comes every doctrine that will make you wiser than your enemies every doctrine that will make you not to be careless in the faith every doctrine that will make you serve god better every doctrine that will keep you Eagerly waiting for the rapture. Hold fast till he comes. The Lord is coming. And as a child of God, the devil will be extremely glad if he could dissuade you from following the Lord because he knows that very soon the trumpet will sound and we believers will believe in this word. He doesn't want you for eternal peace. He wants you for eternal sorrow and agony in the lake of fire. He wants you to join him in the place of torture, in the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. He does not want you to obey and follow the Lord to the end. Break yourself violently from, from him. Don't allow the persuasions of the enemies, the teachings of the first teachers to take you away from the Lord. 
be careful, be watchful, be prayerful, be courteous. Allow the Holy Spirit lead your way and dictate the pace of your movement everywhere you go going forward. The Lord will help you if you are careful. The Lord will help you if you are watchful. Don't... Uh, don't abscond from the house of the law. Attend Bible study regularly. Attend the prayer meeting in your church. Attend the Sunday school in your church. Don't be a Sunday, Sunday medicine. You go to church only on Sunday and you want to grow. You wish to know the Lord better. Nobody knows the Lord that way. On a more better note, it's not possible. How many hours do you spend on service in sun, on, a, on Sundays? How many hours are you spending in the service, you know, on Sundays? I'm just asking you. I'm just asking you. So if the Lord is saying, come closer to me and I will help you, Go closer to him in personal private Bible study. Go closer to him in corporate Bible study. Do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. Go there and tap more current from other believers. Don't run away from the house of God. Don't run away from the rebuke of your pastor. Don't run away from the correction your pastor is making. Accept it and at the end you will rejoice you did because you will be part of those who will rejoice in the kingdom of God. God at Bema, when Jesus began to share, you know, gifts unto people, rewards and crowns unto the people who made it eventually. I have warned you, the Lord will help you. Do not forget PSR, Precautionary Scriptural References, dear for you. Listen to this message one more time. In fact, much more than five times. Listen to this message again and again and again and send it to others. God bless you. Till I come your way the next time. I remain yours sincerely. Apostle S.B. Meduna. God bless you.